A pepper gang, after 40 hours of gameplay since the front launch and through early access, I have picked up some tips and tricks that I'm going to pass on to you. These are going to be in no specific order. They vary from some keybind tricks to taming, horde defense, and more. They are aimed for you guys just picking up the game to make your start a little easier. If you have any further questions though, drop them in the comments below or swing by my Twitch live stream and ask us in the chat. With that, let's get to it. Number one, if you want to improve an existing structure, hold the structure that's upgraded in your hand and go up to the existing one and press X. It will snap into place and then you can left click to upgrade the existing structure. There are a lot of loot containers that spawn high-end structures such as steel and tungsten on the map. Don't let them go to waste. Number two, you need to put a doorway down, take a wall in hand, hold right click to pull up a variation wheel before putting it down. You will see windows, frames, and more doing this. If this works with most structures too. You'll be able to get a lot more creative knowing this. Number three, another small tip that doesn't seem obvious right away. If you want to split items and stacks in your inventory, hold right click and drag them into an empty box. You can then split them evenly or type a number of what you want to split. Number four, mining gives you the best XP gain. I've noticed mining gives you very good gains. I would prioritize this early on. And once you hit level 30, make a jackhammer and keep mining. You will only continue to level faster. And trust me, you will use everything you mine one way or another. Number five, if you need salt ore in bunches, travel down to the southern desert coast in the bottom part of the map. There are spawns along the coast and there's a salt mine at G14. However, look out for well-equipped teams in the desert because of this. Experienced players know the salt is in the desert they will fight you for it because they need it for that boom. Be careful, but definitely make those trips worth it. Number six, so far I noticed the desert and snow are the toughest places to live. The animals are high levels, which give you a lot of XP if you kill them early on in leveling, especially if you move out there as a low level. The trade off for fighting high level creatures is that there's many valuable nodes in both snow and desert regions. The desert has a concentration of iron and salt nodes, while the snow has titanium and tungsten concentrated on the top. Consider living in these biomes early on. Number seven, depending where you live, you might be lacking certain nodes near you that you need such as iron, copper, or salt. If you don't want to travel far for these nodes, you can actually fill your smelter with stone and click on advanced refinement once you unlock it. The advanced refinement option will take three stone and give you one random ore. Since I live in the snow, I've been taking all the stone I find and doing this to farm salt easily. Definitely look into this if you're living in the snow or desert. Number eight, you're going to go eat, poop, be AFK, and don't want to log on the server due to a big queue and don't want to wait getting in. Build a manual drill in your base and go AFK on it. You can passively collect oil or ore this way while away from your keyboard. And you're going to be using both. Time is money. And speaking of time is money, number nine, especially if you're a solo or a small team, always be crafting and smelting in your base. Even if you're crafting stuff you don't need right away. An easy craft I do is taking wood and turning it into resin in the grinding table. I will keep fiber on me to craft rope non-stop. And I will smelt stone into the advanced refinement in my smelters. These are three really common items you can find just about anywhere. If you craft higher level crafts, you will get more XP too. At the end of the day, you want to multitask and if you do it often, you will notice you're constantly gaining XP when not really doing much inside the base. You're going to be more efficient. Number 10. If you start finding colored blueprints, it's worth crafting them for small advantages in gathering, crafting, and PvP and PvE. In order to use them, take them to the respective bench, such as this gear bench. Put all the materials into the bench, and when you have all, click on the BP and hit craft. And the same thing works for BPs in your inventory, just stone tool BPs. Use them as you find them. They make a difference, trust me. Number 11, the territory flag is a temporary way to claim land, guys. It provides no PvP protection. You want to upgrade to a space beacon, which you unlock early on, and you want to place it on the ground, but you have to destroy your flag first. You can only have one or the other. The beacon works like a rust tool cover where you put stuff into it to help auto repair your base. In this case, you put fiber, and you can upgrade it to claim more territory around you. Number 12. So now that you understand what the space beacon is, let me explain PvP protection. For the first 24 hours of placing a new space beacon, your base and territory will have no PvP protection, period, online or offline. After those 24 hours, you will have protection from raiding, except for a three hour window that you set on the beacon. You walk up to your beacon, hold F, and choose defensive settings. The three hour window you choose will be the only time anyone can raid you, this time reflects local time. I would lay low during your first 24 hours so no one finds your base while you get it set up. Number 13. 
The horde defense mechanic is worth doing early on, so you want to set it up ASAP. You need your space beacon down and a creature lore, both unlocked pretty early. The creature lore needs to be on the ground too, away from the beacon, but still in your territory. When you see the supply drop ready on the top left, you go to the space beacon, hit deliver supplies, then you will have the option to start a horde defense. The creatures will spawn into the lure, then try to find the shortest path to your beacon and attempt to destroy it. They will destroy anything in your path that they can, so that's how you plan your traps. Once you defeat the horde, you can claim a reward at the space beacon, and there will be a cooldown afterwards before you can attempt it again, and each time, the difficulty will rise as well as number of creatures spawning. Take this into account when designing a base. Number 14, Taming and Taming. Want to tame an NPC in order to tame a follower? You weaken them under 50 HP, you will see an icon appear over the head, you take bolas, throw it at them, and then once the bolas have them stop moving, you throw a jammer at them, and that should subdue them. They will go into this subdued state where you can start feeding them their favorite food, very similar to Arc and Narcotics. You will see they have a chaos level, and as that chaos level drops, you need to give them more jammers to raise the chaos level and keep them subdued. Higher level creatures and NPCs take more time and more jammers. And there's two jammers that you can craft, the second one being better. Definitely take the level into account because you might be there for quite a while if you're trying to tame something high level. And last but not least, number 15, supply drops. The UFOs around the map are pointing out supply drops. They are worth hitting at all levels as long as you can hit that specific drop. They're tiered. Green drops are for level 1 through 20. Blue for 21 through 30, purple 31 through 40, yellow is 41 through 50, and red is 50 plus. If you decide to live near a UFO supply drop, take the level of the drop into account and how likely someone will go after it each time. I'm assuming big teams are always going for the high end drops because these drops drop really good blueprints. But that's it for this one, guys. I hope you learned something new and useful to make your experience easier in the front. I try to keep it concise. Look out for more content on the game on my channel. If you're new to my channel, take a look at my playlist covering other survival and extraction games. Thank you for making it this far though, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day.